Today we're gonna learn about biodiversity. You may be wondering, why do we need to study biodiversity? And what even is it? Think about the word biodiversity. When you break it down, what does it mean? What does the prefix bio mean? What does the prefix diversity mean? Remember, bio means life. That means any form of life, plants or animals. And diversity means variety or lots of different kinds of life. So looking at these pictures, which image has more biodiversity? Some scientific terms we use to talk about biodiversity are listed here. Species richness, or the total number of different species. That could be an aspen tree, a rose bush, some grass. Species abundance is how many of each of those species there are. So maybe there are five aspen trees. And species evenness is how much they are in comparison to each other. So maybe there's five aspen trees and five rose bushes. That would mean the species evenness is really even. But maybe there's 10 rose bushes and only one aspen tree. So that's not very even. Which of these ecosystems do you think has a higher richness? How could we determine the abundance? If you're thinking we'd have to count all the plants, you'd be close to right. Here's another example of species evenness. Now let's think about why biodiversity is important. Who cares if there's lots of different forms of life? What does it even matter? Think about this. You can talk about it with your family or just think about it in your head. Life needs life. Biodiversity is important because all different species rely on each other. Some type of plants are food for some types of animals, and some types of animals are food for each other. Not to mention how ecosystems are able to break down waste and reuse that as well. The more variety we have, the healthier an ecosystem is. Where do you think we can find the most biodiversity near where we live? Think about any questions that you might have. Today, and in these videos, we are going to be investigating some questions about biodiversity around walking mountains. For monitoring biodiversity, there are many tools that we get to use. I'm going to show you what they all are. We have a measuring device to measure out our plot. The flags are to mark the corners. We have a slope meter to measure how steep the hillside is. We have a compass which measures which direction our hillside is facing. This is a wind meter or an anemometer to measure wind speed. We have a thermometer for soil and air temperature. Those all measure our abiotic factors. Then we have a magnifying glass if you want to look closely at something you find. This is a site for looking for canopy and ground cover. And then of course our note taking sheets and a pencil. Rolling. Why do you think it's important to monitor and study biodiversity? 
When scientists study ecosystems, they study with a particular question in mind so that their study is focused. There are certain things that scientists can control in a study, like slope, angle, or if they're near water, and those are called the independent variable. And then there are certain things that change in response to that independent variable. Things that we can measure, but we can't control. Those are called the dependent variables. So when we come up with a question, we're gonna have an independent variable that we're testing and a dependent variable that we're measuring. In our next video, we're gonna be collecting data to answer a research question with an independent and a dependent variable. So at home, start to think about some different independent variables that you might be interested in exploring and we're gonna try and answer a question. Remember, nature is everywhere, so you don't need to be in the wilderness to learn about biodiversity. You can be in your backyard or in a nature area nearby your house. Tune in next time. Thanks for watching.